It's time for Windows Weekly with Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley. We're going to talk about some rumors surrounding the Microsoft Surface Go, some updates coming up with Windows 10, and did Microsoft just do a musical? <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley, episode 638, recorded Wednesday, September 11th, 2019. And that's how we get Ant. This episode of Windows Weekly is brought to you by Zapier. Zapier connects all your business software and handles the work for you, so you can focus on what matters most. Right now, through November, go to zapier.com slash windows for your free 14-day trial and by ExpressVPN. Protect your online privacy with one click. Yes, it's that easy. For three extra months free with the one-year package, go to expressvpn.com slash windows and by Wasabi Hot Cloud Storage. Thinking about moving your data storage to the cloud? Wasabi is enterprise class cloud storage at one fifth of the price of Amazon S3 and up to six times faster with no hidden fees for egress or API requests. Calculate your savings and try Wasabi with free unlimited storage for a month at wasabi.com code windows. Time for Windows Weekly. Hey folks, I am Ant Pruitt. Hope y'all are doing well. I'm unbelievable as always and I'm... Um, Ooh, might get a little emotional for a second, you know, because this is my wow. first time sitting in the big chair here at the uh, Twit Podcast Network, and I get to do it with these esteemed writers. You know, you have Miss <laughs> Mary Jo Foley and Mr. Paul Therott. So um, thank you all for tuning in, and thank you for uh, hitting the subscribe button on all of your favorite podcatchers. And uh, we're going to get started today with with some great stories around the world of Windows. And hopefully they're going to have some patience with me as they school me on some of this stuff because <laughs> I, I no use patience. Windows. Hold on, though. You know, Hold on. Before we even start, can you tell us more about you? Oh, man. Yeah, who the heck are Nobody you? Nobody wants to who know Who are about you, me. man? Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> who do you think you who are? Who is this guy? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Nobody wants to know about me. <laughs> well, 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 I am a... Um, photographer and video creator, content creator. I've written for Tech Republic over the last couple of years and been on the Twit Network as a guest a handful of times, and I've always enjoyed being on the network. And then, uh, yeah, so now they said, hey, how about you just move out west, bring your whole family, drive wow. 2,919 miles at that, and uh, start wow. camping out here instead. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. <laughs> Are you a Windows guy or a Mac guy? I am a Windows guy. Apparently, I am the only Windows guy here at the at the network. It's <laughs> embarrassing. It's good. But, There's one of us. Uh, <laughs> you know, but the thing is, the, the thing is, though, when it comes to operating system wars, I, I just don't buy into it because as a content creator, all I'm looking at is my apps. I just want the yeah. OS to get out of the way. And yeah. for me, sure. Windows 10 always got out of the way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's good to yeah, hear. Yeah, we 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 know exactly what you're saying. <laughs> 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 yep. But that but that's it about me. I'm the boring guy here. Hey. You guys are the, no, the stars of the show. Oh, you're gonna learn otherwise in about five minutes. <laughs> 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 I appreciate you all having me. I appreciate all of the support from the chat room. I see you guys in there. Thanks for tuning in. And like I said, be sure to get on over there and hit the subscribe button and. No, I'm not having whiskey this time. I know normally on Twitter I have whiskey. But give me about an hour. Day drinker, eh? <laughs> give me about an hour. You know, it'll at least be noon right here. This crowd. Yep. <laughs> Actually, you should also explain, what is this laptop you have? Oh, this is a uh, MSI workstation. Um, this is their heavy lifter division of laptops mm -hmm. that they are building it more for content creators. It's running a uh, ninth gen Core i7 and an oh. NVIDIA Quattro graphics card. So if you really want to try to get in and do some 3D rendering, it's mm -hmm. really built for that. And it's fairly quiet, you know, and, yep. until you get into rendering After Effects and stuff. But right. it's a right. really, really sleek laptop. 
They have a 17 okay. inch one that's a tank. I mm-hmm. reviewed that one before. The thing weighs about 10 pounds. Well, I mean, I'm exaggerating wow. a little bit, but it is, it's massive. But it's definitely and what is built. the size? This one is a 15 sorry, inch here. 15. But the one, the 17 inches, it's, ooh, it's a tank. But it'll get work right. done if you're in the creative space and doing 3D modeling and stuff like that. Cool. Mm-hmm. All right. So, nice. shall we get started with today's topics? Let's go yeah, ahead and. Uh, dive into some of the rumor mill with uh, surface rumors going around. And I hear that you, that uh, they're going to put in a different chip and give it a little more no, horsepower. So. Maybe. Yeah, so you're showing us this souped-up laptop you have, and now let's go to the opposite end of the spectrum, <laughs> Surface yeah. Pro. Yeah. How do you feel right. about Pentium Gold processors? Uh, yeah. Well, uh, no. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> not, not for what I do. The thing is, yeah. uh, the, the, these mobile processors, they have a place, but I, yep. I can't say that it'll fit into my particular workspace. <laughs> right. you know? yep. Yeah. So um, when Microsoft was announcing the Surface Go last summer, I had originally heard from my contacts that this thing was going to be running an Intel Core M3 processor. I never heard about Pentium Gold. I never even heard that name before Surface Go came yep. out. Um. So I believe the M3 was used in some of the Surface Pro family at one point. That's true. Um, That is true. Right? Um, Yep. So it's it's definitely a more performant processor. But here's here's the thing. We don't know if this is going to happen. The way this rumor came about was Windows Latest found a Geekbench benchmark dated back to April that showed something with the same numbers on it as what we believe was the original Surface Go running hmm. what what looks like a core M3. So that's, those are a lot of ifs, right? right. Like yep. maybe that benchmark is real. Maybe this will be coming at some point. We don't know when because that benchmark was from April. Um, what if it was one of those prototypes from the original Go? Could have know? been. Yep. Could have been. Um, but he, the way Microsoft sometimes introduces something like this, a change in processor in an existing machine, is they don't make a big splash about it. So I don't even think this will be part of the upcoming fall hardware event on October 2nd, if it does well, exist. I think what they would do is just add it to the product list on the Microsoft Store and somebody will discover it like Rich Woods, who pays attention to that. <laughs> wow. Well. Yeah. So and I got to say, like, I, yeah, I think this is. is a big deal if it happens. I, I don't you think do? that yeah. the Surface Go is viable as a product right now and that this is exactly what it would need to become, you know, minimally mm-hmm. acceptable. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I honestly, I would greet this as very good news if it happened. Um, yeah. And I would hope that they would trumpet it. So they're marketing yeah. this as the student tablet, if you will? Pretty much. Yeah. yeah it's Students. even, I, I'm not even sure. First line yeah. workers, right? And um, like at consumers who aren't super sensitive to performance. So I have, I bought a Go. I still use it. Um, it's good for when you are on the go, right? Like it weighs a little over a pound, has a keyboard. Yeah. Um, and if you're just checking your email or typing like a one line response to something, for me, it's okay. fine. And that makes sense. That's, that's not a lot of horsepower required to just check your email. No. You know, no. it's good. It's good if you need to run Notepad and you have tiny little exactly. T Rex fingers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the keyboard. I don't know if, if Ant, if you've ever used one of these, but the key the keyboard is tiny. It's a ten point three, ten point one inch device. So the keyboard's really little. Even for me, I don't have giant hands like yeah. Paul. But yeah, I think my hands um, are like eight. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. But you could probably like touch the two edges of the screen. Yeah. Yeah. That that yeah. would not work for me. Yeah, it's not no. really optimal for typing. Even like if I had to type a 500 word article, I don't, I could, I don't think I could use that keyboard. Mm. Well, how um, would a student use it? Because a student I has know. to take notes, right? Right. I think it's more for kids, students, not college students. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't, <laughs> oh, okay. I really don't think this is viable is this, as for a college student. Is this um, the other babysitter in the house? Is what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, they wanted <laughs> a, a more uh, a less expensive surface. Something that maybe was a little more competitive with the iPad. Yeah. Yep. I like the idea of, of mobility, but again, mm-hmm. I, I need it yeah. to be a performer in my workspace. Yeah. And even if I wasn't just creating content, 
uh, say I was a, a, a salesperson, um, I still mm -hmm. needed to be able to perform just enough yeah. to be able to access the CRM or anything like that and, yeah. and get messages right. out pretty quickly. And I would have assumed yeah. this would have been good enough, but uh, I'm still I shaky so. on that process <laughs> myself. <laughs> yep. You know, what's funny yeah. though. I, I hear, and Paul probably does too. I hear from people all the time who say, this is the device I use at work now. And I actually run VMs on it. And I'm like, wow. wow. Really? No, I know. No, I no, 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 no. I do. I, no. I heard from a guy this week. He said, this has become my main uh, device. Yes. I know. I know. And I was like, is, what? Really? We used to hear from Windows Phone people too. That doesn't mean, mean it know, makes sense. I know. I, I, I know. The, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Except for the highest end configuration, this thing has eMMC storage, which is terrible in Windows. You know, the, the performance is just terrible. I, I, it's just yeah. not a, it's almost not even a computer. It's just, <laughs> well, come, it, it can do one to two things. <laughs> it is a display. You know? It is a display. Yeah, a lot of people yeah. use it as that, right? Like a, a second display. Yeah. Okay. I really think yep. this is just about cost. Uh, Surface, I'm, I'm sure they wanted to have better performance but at the price they they just wanted to get into a certain price segment and yeah. um it's i mean i get it and this is what this has been kind of a curious debate this summer for me with uh, readers and so forth about the the notion of sub 500 dollars computers which by the way this thing technically isn't you know not really um mm -hmm. but you know whatever um you know can you even buy such a computer that's any good and honestly for the most part unless your needs are very minor the answer is kind of no i mean you have to you have to basically spend more than that at least in the windows space to get a decent machine right right yeah i had some people ask um don't you think they would go with an arm processor before they would come out with the core m3 mm -hmm. i do not i don't right didn't the arm processor because, sort because of blow up in microsoft's face a couple of years ago yes <laughs> but, uh, they're, <laughs> just they're, to put it lightly trying it again yeah <laughs> They're trying again. Yeah. Jeez. All right. Yeah. yeah, I think the the issue there would be the compatibility and also the performance is probably even worse, honestly, on current gen ARM uh, hardware. So we'll see. There's an HCX chip coming, the uh, new PCs based on that. Those will be fairly expensive, by the way. I'm sure they'll be all over $1,000 or up in that price range. But uh, supposedly that fixes the performance, uh, the performance issues. You know, we'll see. But it's not, that chip can't be used in a Surface Go. It's just too expensive. Mm -hmm. Well, someone in the chat room brings up a good point. Could this necessarily be rommed out to 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 run as a Chromebook? This hardware. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> I would say yes. I'm sure. I mean, if you look at the Chromebook space, there are Pentium, Celeron, uh, low-end ARM chips. Uh, these are machines that often have like two gigs of RAM and sixteen, maybe thirty-two gigs of storage. You know, Windows, unfortunately, the full Windows has, um, you know, higher system, you know, uh, resource requirements, whatever, both, di both disk space and performance wise. Um, Microsoft is rumored to be working on some sort of a Chromebook type system uh, mm -hmm. called Light OS or whatever the name is this week. But yeah, I, I think something like that, assuming that Light OS is a lot like Chrome OS, uh, or if you just wanted to run Chrome OS on the system, um, yeah, I think. I think that would actually work pretty well. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. I love the fact that my laptop decides to do its Windows update right now. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yep. This is how you make your splash on the mm -hmm. podcast network, folks. Yep. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I do remember the last thing that I looked at before it went into update mode. <laughs> and that's the... <laughs> That is the uh, yes. the speakers that that Microsoft yeah. seems to be working on. That looks like it's something that's built more for the enterprise and not necessarily just something you want to put in your kitchen. Yeah, I think that's I would fair. think so too. Yeah, so there there's a new patent that got published this week by the Patent and Trade Office for a portable speaker from Microsoft, and it looks a lot like the Google Home Mini, right? Looks like there's cloth maybe on top. Right. Possibly. Sure. Um, like a shroud, there's like also, a death shroud. <laughs> <laughs> there's also a call nice. buttons on it and all, right? Um, mm -hmm. So my guess is if this thing ever does come to market, uh, it would likely be a Teams type conferencing device and not something like the Echo, right? I mean, what not... Uh, when yeah, you first hear Microsoft's going to make home. a speaker, right? You're like, no, right? <laughs> But if it were if it were a Teams device, it would make more sense to me. Yep. Yep. What's uh, 
lot to say about it. It um, from the pictures uh, that are part of the patent application, it just looks like a little hockey puck kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, like interestingly, yeah. Interestingly, some of the people who are on the patent listed on the patent work in the Microsoft 365 and Teams organization. So that right. makes you also think it's probably a Teams device. And I think yeah. Brad in his book uh, about the Surface right. said he had heard there was some kind of ambient computing device coming, mm -hmm. which I guess means a speaker, right? Yeah, and it's not hard to imagine this particular device being produced in whatever the Surface color, you know, colors yeah. are this coming year, you know, like they make mice in those colors and keyboards <laughs> and so forth. Um, so, yeah, I just don't, you know, Surface isn't really a consumer brand per se. Um, I, I, I don't see Microsoft making their own Cortana speaker for the home regardless. Um, and so I, I think this makes sense as a Microsoft 365 slash Teams specific kind of solution. It, though, you know what? There is a thing in the works we believe called Teams for Life, which we think mm -hmm. is a version of Teams that Microsoft's going to try to market to families. And so if that does become a product or a service, this device maybe could work with that too. If you had like a need to have a call, say with grandparents somewhere else and the whole family <laughs> sitting around the table, you know, like the Waltons. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <Kind of. laughs> no, yeah. no, actually, no, that doesn't make any sense. No, but yeah. actually, no, but... <laughs> <laughs> Right. But still, I mean, maybe yep. maybe it could work with that, too, if that mm -hmm. if they wanted to, excuse me, um, kind of move into more of a consumer play with it. But this is not going to be a thing like the Harman Kardon invoke it, as far as I would imagine. I think they're out of that idea that Cortana yep. is a standalone assistant like Siri, like Alexa. You know, <laughs> I think they've yep. passed that point. Yep, I agree. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. This laptop is still updating. That's okay. So it take we know it takes a while. <laughs> I'm not Imagine sure how what long I it would take if you had a Surface Go. But it's quite all right. We'll we'll, we'll keep yeah. rolling along here. Um, far as Microsoft Teams, uh, at my former place of employment, I I enjoyed uh, using Teams and then seeing something like this being thrown in the mix to help make something like those virtual meetings go a lot smoother mm -hmm. would be amazing because you get, forget looking through the, through the laptop camera that's staring up your nose. But if you have good audio for those meetings, that, that just makes things so much better. You're not worrying about people breathing into the microphones or anything <laughs> like that. And then yeah. I'm, I'm assuming there's more noise cancellation built into those proposed uh, speakers that we're looking at and that would just really help. Yeah, they're far field mics day. probably and all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, remember it was probably, it uh, could have been 10 or even 15 years ago, Microsoft started talking about conference room solutions that included, you know, mic arrays. It looked like, like almost like a flower pot. It was this thing that would sit in the middle of the table and it would point mics in every direction uh, so the people sitting around the table could all be heard. And of course, you can put stuff like that into a very tiny device today. So this might be mm -hmm. the logical progression of that sort of idea yep. yeah just more modern and, and tiny mm -hmm. sir mars says the real question is can we get our team speaker in dark green <laughs> right to match the new <laughs> iphone that's because that's what matters <laughs> nowadays right? It's, right it totally does is it going to have alcantara on it that's another key yeah. question <laughs> I, actually i think it will have something like that right if, you, if you're familiar yep. with uh, the new echo or the google home mini Mm -hmm. uh, they both have kind of a nice fabric-y kind of thing going on. You get different colors and so forth, like coral and light gray or whatever. And, you know, like I said, I think Microsoft will probably make this in multiple colors to match whatever the, you know, the type cover or Surface Laptop Alcantara cover colors are, you know, yeah. whatever this next, whenever this next mm -hmm. rev hits. Right. So, again, let's just be clear. This is a patent application and Microsoft has a million different patent applications that right. never become products. Right. right. They they patent a lot of stuff. Like it's every out there to vendor. protect themselves, if you will, just in yes. case. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yep. But I my agree. guess is if it does come to market, this October 2nd event might be a good place to introduce it. Yeah, I agree. Right? Yep. Because mm -hmm. um, last year at the fall hardware launch they had here in New York, they their big 
reveal was the Surface headphones. So I think they'd like to have something, you know, we know they're going to have refreshes on their Surface devices at this thing, mm -hmm. but they probably want to have one. Here's our one more thing, right? Apple's not doing wow. it anymore, so we should do it. <laughs> Take over that space. Yeah. Yep. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, they'll have an entry in that space. <laughs> yes. Exactly. The Surface yeah. headphones yeah, so I thought 2nd. were pretty nice. I, I, I yeah. think the Surface yeah. headphones were, were highly underrated. They didn't get as no, enough credit as yeah. they should have, in my opinion. Sound quality was great. Um, I yeah. think the problem is just that it's just a singular set of headphones. You know, they don't have a range mm -hmm. of different options. They don't have any ear, like earbuds or whatever. And, you know, if they with Microsoft, mm -hmm. they, there's always this fear. They're kind of dabbling. And, um, it would have not that they ever would do it this way, but you'd almost hope that they would come up with two or even three different types of headphones at a time. But yeah, it's it would be very much like Microsoft to try a headphone last year and then try a speaker this year, and <laughs> next year they'll try. You know, they'll just keep trying something. It's sort of vaguely in the ballpark, um, but yeah, they don't really I, seem to just go for it. You know? No, they don't. And and when I when I had heard some rumors last year about what they were going to do for their quote one more thing, I had heard they were working on like a Jabra headset, right? Like more of a conferencing yeah. headset. And that would make which, sense. Yeah, that would make, that would make a lot sense. of sense, right? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Enterprise um, space, but, you know. Yeah, and but then there's also rumors of Surface earbuds too that a couple people right. have heard about. Um, so they seem to still be working on audio related devices under the Surface brand. Even the uh, Surface headphones, you know, why wasn't there yeah. a white or green version for Xbox? You know, I, I, yeah. that's the type of product uh, Xbox gamers would love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. Something skinned. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah so, or skinnable. Yeah, something you could even, yeah, customize however you wanted. Um, yeah, but they don't, I don't know. That's what I mean. They just kind of, here's the thing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, we'll we see did what it. happens. <laughs> yeah. Yep, I know. It's just, it's just yeah, seems so kind of Yeah, so October 2nd is... That's three weeks from today, right? Right, um, that sounds about right. Yeah, so that's going to be the big, we think, big, hopefully, hardware launch for Microsoft here in New York. We still don't know the time of day that right. it's going to happen or where in New York it's going to happen. Um, but we still are hearing kind of consistently the same rumors around this, that they're going to have an ARM-based Surface device, uh, probably the 8CX chip. Uh, that they're going to have a new refresh to the Surface Pro line with USB-C and an AMD-based Surface laptop. Those three things everybody kind of is hearing, I think, pretty consistently. But well, I, I, I bet there's more than that. I hope so. Well, yeah. I am in the middle of switching out devices to at least <laughs> be somewhat productive on this here podcast. So we're going to log into a surface and hopefully I can get back to our document nice. here and uh, keep us moving right along. Um, now see, I still don't see my document yet. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. We know how this happens. It happens to all of us. The yep. update suddenly in the middle of your work day. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Right, well, that's getting this. better, right? Now you can actually put some more uh, controls on when you get your updates to some extent. And yeah. I, I, and I've seen that feature before. Um, mm -hmm. But the problems that I've had in the past was when you set it up, it would attempt to run those updates, say at two in the morning or what have you, and you'd wake up. Yep. And it would say it, there was a failure. So you still yes. ended up right back at, at square yeah. one okay. and running it in the middle of your day. Now, I know mm -hmm. you had some pieces in here, Mr. Therat, talking about some new mm -hmm. updates coming in Windows. Uh, is it something? Yep. Is that something that's going to be addressed? Just little tiny features like no. that? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not going to be addressed. You know. um, one, one of the little dramas that we lived with this summer in the Windows community was Microsoft earlier in the year started testing Windows 10 version 20 H1, which is the version coming next spring, leading to questions about what was going to happen in the fall. And they said, no, don't worry, we're going to have a 19 H2 as well. We will discuss that later. And then, you know, three months went by, four months, whatever the time frame was. And they finally started testing 19 H2, but they never really talked about anything that was going to be new. It was sort of a service pack, sort of a cumulative update. The new features are going to be disabled by default. There weren't going to be that many of them. 
they were doing a lot of A-B testing, so insiders who were on the correct ring to get that version didn't always see the new stuff. In fact, 90% of them apparently never saw that stuff. Um, and this kind of went on all summer. And finally, last week, they made uh, version uh, Windows 10 version 19H2 available to any insider who was in the slow ring in the time. Although, by the way, I think today they made it also available to release preview uh, insiders. Mm -hmm meaning that you could go to Windows Update, check for an update, and you would get this thing that looked like a feature update. It's really a cumulative update, but it would just bump the version number up and would enable those new features. And then for the first time, they actually listed what those new features were. You know, So this thing could ship as soon as, I don't know, next week or two weeks from now, whatever the time frame is. But um, you know, now we finally know. And sure enough, it, it isn't a lot of new stuff. In fact, from, I would say, a typical... And user perspective, the only two things I think that most people would ever notice, and honestly, most people would never notice either one of these, is if you're familiar with the uh, date and time flyout that you know that pops up from the right uh, the date and time control. In the pr uh, previous versions of Windows 10, there's a there's a new event button, and when you click it, a new event window opens, part of the calendar app. In the 19H2, they're adding the ability to add that event in line right in that that pop-up shade or whatever you want to call the thing, a pane or whatever. Um, so not super exciting, but you know, if you, you if you happen to use that a lot to look at your agenda, which you can do, um, that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's functional. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not bad. And then the other one, and I, this is oddly enough, I don't actually see this, but apparently when you search from File Explorer using that little search box up in the corner, which you can get to with, I think, Control-E and... Control F too, um, Control F as well. I should say. Um, supposedly, it will deliver results based on both things in the file system and from the web. For some reason, <laughs> um, I only see local file system results when I do this, so I don't quite understand how, how you make that change. In fact, I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, I don't. I don't know how that works. But um, beyond that, it's mostly just a couple, you know, little things. There's a there is one useful feature for businesses assuming they ever wanted to deploy s mode which is if you're managing your environment with intune you can actually create an exception for windows 10s devices so that they can run specific um uh win32 or desktop Win32. applications yep yeah. And that, that, there you go. I mean, uh, it, it, Mary Jo will remember this. I mean, when we go back to the very beginning of this discussion around S mode, I, uh, you know, I was my, the conversation I know I had was there has to be a happy middle ground here, mm -hmm. right? You should be able to say, look, I need to run Chrome yep. and then turn on S mode, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> yeah. S mode should be on all the time, but let me do this one thing because there's always that one <laughs> app or maybe some Small right. number of apps. Now, they're not allowing that for individuals, but they are providing it to businesses um, that use Intune. So that's that's cool. Mm -hmm. That's I mean, uh, and I don't think uh, S-Mode has a big deployment um, in businesses, but, um, but you know, maybe this will help with that. Mm. Nice, nice. Now, the, the whole file explorer search, um, I, I don't quite get the logic in that, being able to actually yeah. search the web. <laughs> You know, because generally well, when I'm searching, searching on my computer, <laughs> I'm searching for an app or I'm searching for a file on my computer. Yeah. Uh, nine times out of 10, if I'm searching on the web, it's not something that I own. Um, yep. And it's not something that I could just access fairly quickly. Do, I wonder mm -hmm. what the logic was behind that. Unless I'm, if I'm well, searching um, for stuff on the web, why not just open up a browser? Mm -hmm. Yep. So Microsoft has <laughs> been working on... Um, file system integration with the web since 1997 probably or i guess working on it since 96 um the in the current version of windows 10 if you leave the surface at uh, the surface yeah if you leave the search box op uh, on you know if it's available in the taskbar right when you bring that thing up you actually see tabs for different types of searches and so the default is all which is all types of searches it can do but you can uh, fine tune that down to documents or apps email web and then there's a bunch of other stuff which falls into more, which is like uh, specific folders, music, people, photos, settings, and videos. And so in uh, this version of Windows, uh, 19, actually it was in the previous version, excuse me, in Windows uh, 10 version 1903, the one that came out this past spring, they actually separated search from Cortana. And so you can control those two things separately. 
but they still maintain this search thing, which is kind of like a multi-dimensional search, I guess, across different mm. types of things. And so, I, like, like you said, like, uh, why would you want to search the web from File Explorer? <laughs> I cannot think of yep. a single reason. I have no idea why that would be there because this, this other just, search is available. It? Right. Isn't it just that they're trying to put this thing you're describing unified Microsoft unis, unified search everywhere, right? Like they want to have it be one thing, even though yeah, it doesn't I, really make sense. I don't think it makes <laughs> sense. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know what, you know, the name keeps changing, but this thing that I think of yeah. as windows search, you know, it used to be like yeah, start search Microsoft or smart search, search or right? Microsoft yeah, search. I yeah. I Microsoft mean, search. Yeah. It, it, it's, this <laughs> is, yeah. By the way, what this might be about, I should maybe here, let's speculate because um, we know that there's this uh, Microsoft Graph thing going on in Office 365, mm -hmm. and the idea here is that you have data in all kinds of different places, and that this will kind of bring it in and give you a picture of where, you know, a big picture of stuff. You're looking for a project, you can get all your different contacts, people are working on the project, or documents or applications you need for it, whatever it is. It might be mm -hmm. tied to that. I mean, they, they, they really have never given up on this idea. I mean, it, actually, if you think about it, this really goes back to even Cairo, you know, this notion that, yeah. You, you could just search <laughs> and find everything. Yeah. Um, I, but I don't think people think that way. I when think, I think like about you said, it, why wouldn't I just open a web browser? When I think about it, it seems like it makes more sense on a mobile device. Um, yeah. Because mm -hmm. on a mobile device, you're sort of wanting it quickly just to reference and, or just to hit that share. But if I'm sitting mm -hmm. at a laptop, I'm thinking I'm trying to get work done. I'm trying to get something yeah. accomplished at the time. And sure. I'd rather it be something that's local that I can continue mm -hmm. to work on and, and finish up, if you will, versus finding it yeah. on the web, downloading it, make sure I actually have the rights to download it or install and all of that I'm not, stuff. I'm not defending this. Yeah. <laughs> Are you clear. sure? I don't Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. But if you, um, I, I mean, but kind of playing devil's advocate, thinking it through a little bit, I suppose, you know, you might have had, you're looking for a graphic or something and like, you're like, I had a good picture of a tree or something and I thought it was in my documents. It might've been in OneDrive. It may be helpful if you don't find it there, you know, would you like to continue the search on the web? I mean, maybe I, I like you, like you probably, it sounds like I, I don't think that way as a user. I don't, I, I, I can compartmentalize and I don't think that makes me inefficient, but I don't know. They just can't seem to give this stuff up. <laughs> they keep trying. Right, right. Okay, well, we're going, we're going to go ahead and take a quick break and um, go ahead and give a shout out to one of our sponsors here. My laptop is now booted up, so <laughs> I'm going to move this Surface over here to the side. You know, we'll just use it as a desk prop. And we'll go ahead and give a shout out and a thanks to the folks over at Zapier. Zapier. So... This episode of Windows Weekly is brought to you by Zapier. Growing a business is hard, folks. You don't want to be wasting hours every day moving data from emails to spreadsheets to CRMs or wherever you need it to go. Shouldn't that just happen for you? Well, Zapier can help. Zapier has over 1,500 apps and is the easiest way to automate your work. Focus on what matters the most connecting all your business software to engage your leads, to automatically import new customers, and heck, even just to notify your team of, of some opportunities that are out there. Zapier is more customizable and it supports multi-step zaps. So the possibilities are virtually endless, folks. Build a solution you need in minutes. No more wasting your time on tasks that you know could be automated because that's exactly what Zapier was built to do. So what you need to do is just go on over to zapier.com slash windows and connect the apps that you use the most and let Zapier just take over from there. Best of all, it's the easy way to build the exact solution you need. You don't have to worry about trying to figure out code to write or just pinging a developer for some help. You can just do it all yourself. Join more than 4.5 million people who are saving an average of 40 hours a month just by using the Zapier service. We have one of our uh, favorite co-hosts here on the network, Micah Sargent. He uses Zapier pretty often to handle scheduling out posts for social media, whether it's certain things based on a hashtag can go to Twitter or go to Instagram or go to both. He's figured out the magic that works best for him, and it was all just within a few clicks of using Zapier. So make more time to grow your business right now. 
through November. Try Zapier for free by going to zapier.com slash windows. That's Z-A-P-I-E-R dot com slash windows for your free 14-day trial. That's zapier.com slash windows. Thank you for your support, Zapier. All right. So let's take a look at Microsoft 365s. Now that we have um, some, it looks like there's some support coming for uh, people running Linux. Uh, when I think about uh, the Linux users out there, I always consume, I always assume that they're spending a lot of time in their favorite IDE, and being able to to have um, developers collaborate with one another on the same platform is is probably a seamless and a, a mindless interaction that they they can just go through day to day. So now having teams on that platform seems like that'd be pretty beneficial, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? Nice. I, I think the real reason Microsoft is doing this, the primary reason is Slack has a Linux client. Oh, and wow. so they want to make sure they have everything Slack has. Okay, so teams. it's one of those where we do too. Mm. Like, I mean, like quarterly losses, are they going to have that too? Uh, I don't oh. know if they want to have that. <laughs> Cue the rim <laughs> shot. Yep. Yeah, but I but I agree with you. It, you know, everybody's like, oh yeah, for the one percent of the Linux desktop market, blah blah blah. Like, how few people are using Linux on their desktop? Well, they that's the other part of this is it is for developers, right? That's who they're going after. Every almost everything Microsoft does with Linux is about developers. So, yeah, you're right about that. <laughs> I don't know, but you know, I I put I I wrote about this this week, and um, the reason it became news is Microsoft's been kind of hinting maybe we're going to do a Linux client for Teams, maybe we aren't, we might, and then this week on User Voice they said we're working on it. Finally, the status changed, right? Uh, they won't say when it's coming, by the way. Uh, they just are saying it some at some point. But you know what I wish they would work on instead, or at the same time, is making the team's client work better, right? How so? The thing, everybody who talks about teams is they're like, yeah, it's, it really is a oh. big app, How about right? Skype, yeah, it's pretty Skype heavy. Federation. Yeah, that's coming. Skype, Skype yeah. Consumer Federation with Teams is still coming soon. Um, yeah. But I, I've had to use, uh, so Microsoft, when they do calls with us these days, they set them up as Teams meetings with the press, right? Every single time, I've tried to use the Teams client. It hasn't worked. Oh, no. Like, right. like either I can't see the graphics they're showing or I can't hear them and I have to dial in. And I'm like, how has this never worked? Right. Like, never. <laughs> yeah. And and then they're like, are you using the web client? I'm like, I'm trying the web client now because the other thing is so bloated and gigantic. Right. And <laughs> the web client never works. Like, never. Right. <laughs> So I'm like, guys, okay, it's great you're supporting all the platforms and adding <laughs> stickers and like all that fun stuff, yeah, but how about yeah. making it work a little better? <laughs> well, this thing, you know, it's it's shipped in very incomplete state yeah. and they've been upgrading yeah. it pretty quickly, but we tried yeah. to switch to it early on and what we discovered, we had all kinds of problems with it, but one of the first things we discovered was that you couldn't do anything about the settings for the webcam unless you were connected to a call. And mm. it was like, well, oh, wow. I, I yeah. need to... I need to configure that before I connect to the call. That's the point. <laughs> you know, I want to make sure I'm using the right camera or whatever it is. Yeah. And uh, it was just kind of immature, but um, I don't know. I think once they hit this, you know, we can federate with Skype mm -hmm. phase, um, they'll pretty much be there. Now, yeah. Steve, personally, I had a worse experience using Skype for business over the years. And, oh, yeah. and Teams just seemed <laughs> like a breath of fresh air. Um, but mm. then again, was, was the bar set a little lower than expected. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yep. yeah. Yeah. Skype, Skype said, is, is, is pretty bad. It's every, that never worked either. Right. So yeah. I've heard, I've had people say, you know what? I like the team service, the back end service. It's way, it works way better than Skype for business, but the UI of it needs a lot of work. Mm -hmm. um, right. So yeah, I haven't yeah. used it in a while, but I, we can't, uh, we're not even going to look at it until uh, the Skype thing happens. Yeah. You need that. Right. Well, because, you know, in my, we, I work for a very small company, but everyone uses Skype. We all have, you know, friend, co friends and contacts on Skype. You know, Mary Jo and I communicate mm -hmm. on Skype. We have to use Skype for the podcast. Yep. And uh, let's let's introduce another messaging app. You know, so we have another way to communicate 
except that we can't communicate with the people we communicate with it only use Skype. <laughs> like, so we have to, <laughs> you know, it was, just, it was just an extra thing. Like it didn't do anything yeah. better or different uh, than what Skype was already doing. In fact, it did less. And so that was kind of the problem, but you know, mm -hmm. we'd like, I, you know, once Skype compatibility hits, I would consider it. I'll look at it again. Now, Miss Mary Jo, you, you you wrote a piece about Richard Stallman of all people showing up at, at a Microsoft campus. That that mm -hmm. just doesn't sound right. Richard Stallman? I know. Really? I know. <laughs> <laughs> I actually was thought he this wearing was a, a joke. Tute, uh, like a moo moo and sandals or what how, what what was that hey, like? Hey, be careful um, now. You can't talk about Richard Stallman now. <laughs> you better be careful. You're right, because he'll come out of the woodwork and chase you down. Yeah, like <laughs> a bell rug. <laughs> yeah, and and so here's the funniest part of this whole story. So last week, I forget what Paul and I were talking about. Something about open source. On we were talking on Skype, and I said something about Richard Stallman, right? And I made a joke about it. And then I saw somebody tweet uh, last week: Richard Stallman is on the Microsoft campus giving a talk. And I'm like, oh. How how weird is that that somebody's making the same joke is this basically April that Fools? I just made? <laughs> right. <laughs> right, right. But then Mark Rusinovich, who is the CTO of Azure at Microsoft, said, "Yeah, Richard Stallman's here giving a talk at Microsoft Research, and there oh, suddenly there's all these pictures of him at Microsoft giving a lecture, right? And you could see him. There's pictures of him at the podium. There is no recording of this because he doesn't believe in allowing." video recordings um, for companies that use proprietary. No, if you use proprietary JS, he doesn't allow you to have a video recording. Uh, he, this guy has many rules. Many. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you don't know who he is, no by the way, look him up. Codex. Richard M. Stallman, Free Software Foundation. Free You'll Software. Find lots of things. Copy left. All kinds of interesting ideas that are not open source, by the way, and not Linux. Like don't don't confuse Linux with GNU, um, or he'll oh, come after you. Yeah, please. Yeah. <laughs> so it, I yeah. I heard from a guy uh, on Twitter. Um, I I was asking people, were you there? Who was there? Who knows what he said? And uh, one of Microsoft software engineers named Pedro Paulo said to me on Twitter. He gave a, quote, mostly standard talk. He talked about free software. He talked about GPL version 3, GNU versus Linux. But then he had a list of small requests for Microsoft. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Here's the small request. Make GitHub push you uh, make GitHub push users to better software license hygiene. Make hardware Which manufacturers publish their hardware specs. And make it easier for us to work around secure boot in Windows. No big deal. Um, okay. Could, so can we just open source is, Windows? Would that be enough? I know. My, my question is, why did Microsoft invite him? That's what speak? I want to know. This this man clearly has a um, love-hate relationship with Microsoft, so much that he has a, a big list on his page saying yeah. reasons not yeah. to use Microsoft. But Plus, you, say there's any you, have to, you have to give the guy credit for traveling to Microsoft on his own dime and not getting paid. So, you know, he's he's a really credible critic. I'm Is sure that what happened, Mary Jo? Sure they paid him. <laughs> I mean, And seriously. I'm sure they paid his travel. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, would, I mean, I don't know that for, I can't say, I know that for a fact, but I know Microsoft invites many people to speak on campus. I even got invited when I wrote my book. Mm -hmm. They invited me to come and speak on campus and they paid my way. They didn't pay me yep. to speak, but they paid right. for me to come campus. Right. Um, but yeah, um, I just am curious because I understand when they, when they invite um, like open software people to campus or people who want to talk about Linux. I understand that there may be some lessons for Microsoft or partnership things, but why did they invite Richard Stallman? You know what? Because there's no nothing and nobody they can't embrace. You know, the, the new Microsoft is so eager to prove that it's, you know, loves you Linux or whatever. Yeah, they just, yeah. Uh, of course. I mean, you invite your <laughs> harshest critic to campus yeah, to speak to your own employees. I mean, it's, that's Microsoft today. I know. I saw some people saying it's all part of our growth mindset outlook these days mm. that, you know, you should listen to different perspectives. I'm like, yeah, but this guy's perspectives, there's like, Isn't there's no I common ground. With you folks. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, those yeah. <laughs> topics you just said, he spoke about GPL version three, uh, GNU yeah. versus Linux. I mean, 
this is like it's like listening to a Beatles record. Didn't I hear this like twenty years ago? What's going on? Like yeah. this is like this is not new. You know? Nope. I don't know. I like the notion that Microsoft tricked users into upgrading to Windows ten. Tricked them. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Dirty old Microsoft. <laughs> I, I, I gave up trying to figure out Mr. Stallman many, many, many years yeah. ago. And uh I'll just yeah. I'll, I'll just leave it at that. I I'll him give once. him credit for being consistent. He's consistent. <laughs> I mean he's never he's never backed out like no, he you know, you, you're not going to surprise him in a back room where he's like using a Mac, you know, like he's, <laughs> no. you know, he's really, you know, he's serious about it. Right. And I, I mean, yeah. I give him a little credit for that. The, the problem is a lot of what he's serious about is insane. And, and it's I just, I I, yeah, I met him it's here in New York works. when I, I moved here um, 20 years ago. I met him right when I moved to New York and he was giving a lecture at NYU. And I, I'm like, I got to go see this guy because right. I've heard so much about him. And so he was there. Um, and then when he found out I was with the press, he would not let go of me almost oh, literally. Man. Like he's like, I, all right, I'm charging you with making sure you never use the word Linux by itself. And you always have to say GNU, GNU Linux. Linux. For, do you, are you committing to this? And I'm like, uh, you're a weirdo. No, yeah. I'm not. Like, like, who are you, dude? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Man. So I, I just am very curious. Um, about Did that he have whole, like a little, uh, like a cardboard sign that said like, will GNU <laughs> Linux for food or something? No, he did not. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I, I just thought that was probably one of the weirdest uh, people I've seen Microsoft bring to campus to speak, I have to say. Hopefully he's not going to be <laughs> like keynoting one of their conferences that we're going to this year. Like suddenly at Ignite, he's the surprise guest. No. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. That would be... That would be not, that would no no he no, would never ignite no. my god I know my he would god. never go to Ugh. that I just got a chili at my I, back that was <laughs> I wish there was a way to poll the room the, the attendees that were there just just to get their thoughts and you know what was discussed what are your thoughts and how is this going to yeah. affect you when you go and sit at your desk you know mm -hmm. here in, in a very you no know, but in, a, in in kind of a brainwashy fashion I bet a lot of people at Microsoft saw value in this right and just what mary joe said you know opening yourself up to opposing viewpoints and hearing the other side and even as i say that it doesn't sound unreasonable it's just that you have to remember this person is insane we're not talking about you know understanding <laughs> yeah. other political viewpoints or religions or something like oh no it's it's far weightier than that <laughs> you know this guy is a nut so i i i don't know yeah i i'm sure some of them thought it was great yeah. Eric Dutman in the chat room says there is one OS, GNU Linux, GNU Linux and Stallman is the prophet. There we go. He's the well prophet. said. Yeah. He's, he is the something. <laughs> well said. Uh, moving on, uh, I know a lot of folks had an affinity for Wonderless. I was one of those users out there. Yeah. And then Microsoft jumped in and, and, and swooped up Wonderless and starting to do some redesigns with To Do. Uh, mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on, on this here, uh, story? Because nowadays you're hearing wonderless, uh, founders saying, Hey, let me, let me just buy it back because <laughs> you, you're, you're going to kill it off. Let me just buy it back yeah. for me. Here's some things so, you don't hear every day. <laughs> the thing about that, by the way, is when Microsoft bought wonderlist and said they were going to roll it into to do and, I don't remember when was that two years ago, three years ago, 2015. Years? I don't, some, 2015. It okay, wasn't that long ago. Yeah. Yep. No, but you know what happened was for the first year or more, nothing occurred basically. Right. And um, I don't remember when Marcus went out, Marcus Ash, a guy at Microsoft who uh, went out to Berlin, which is where Wonderlist was originally located. Microsoft had an, as a field office or as an office there of some kind. And uh, he took over the team working on that and some other related things like uh, actually OneNote's part of this team now and um, Sticky Notes is part of this team and started mm -hmm. expanding the clients and making them compatible with each other. And all of a sudden it seemed like to do was updated very frequently, you know. Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. I, I found the timing of this guy complaining to be odd and it became a little odder when uh, two days later, Microsoft yeah. all of a sudden... <laughs> released a brand new version of to do that looks surprisingly like the old wonder list all of a sudden. Right. Shocking. Um, so I think those two things Plus, might be related. Right? You know, but also how, how could he even, my question is how could he buy back the company? Because when Microsoft yeah. bought them, 
they took the people, they took the technology, they, like you said, they folded it into to do. Yep. So there isn't yep. like two separate things, even though they kept, they are keeping Wonderlist alive for now. We don't know when they're going to kill it, but they are. Um, but yep. there isn't like a separate team you could sell back to him or like, would he buy the patents well, or think, what does he want to buy? Would probably, right? Yeah. He'd probably get the app and then the, uh, yeah. yeah, whatever associated IP might be related to it. I, I'm sure there would be a, a handful of people there who are, yeah. you know, who would go back uh, with yeah. him or whatever. But I mean, what are we yeah. talking? This is a to do app for quite a lot of people. Like it's just kind of odd. I, it, it, yeah. yeah. I, saw, I saw him tweet that. He said, Satya Nadella, I'll buy it back from you. I don't want you to kill it. And, he said um, Satya Nadella and Marcus Ash. As if yeah. Marcus in, in some way, you know, had did, did betrayed he, this app. Or, did did, did uh, he say to keep the, that, that Microsoft could keep the team in one of those tweets? He, no, he, he didn't really get no. into details. No. <laughs> He, he did tweet a whole list of things. It. No, he tweeted a giant list of things he would do, mm -hmm. like make it completely open source and free forever. And mm -hmm. I want to build um, shared folders and these kinds of integrations. Like he has a really specific plan for what he would do if he could take did it back. Did he have a specific but, plan for how he was going to make money doing it? Because you, what you I just know, described right. is something free. Yep. And I don't I quite understand what the business model is. And by the way, again, I have to highlight, this is a to-do app. Right. Know. You know, most right. people uh, just make lists. I mean, most people yeah. don't use a to-do app. I, I don't – look, I'm sure yeah. it's crucial for people that need it. Don't get me wrong. But, I mean, this is not curing cancer here. It's a it's a to-do app. Yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 it just, just seems like a weird thing to take. Well, it's yeah. not quite you know, Richard Stallman weird. If it weird, is your but, baby – no, if, if it's your yeah. baby, like say you made one thing that was really well mm -hmm. received and, and you were very famous for it, like Christian Reber making to, uh, making Wonderlist, right? So yeah. if you could say like, oh, I don't like the what, what Microsoft ended up doing with it. Uh, he just said, mm -hmm. he said in his tweet, I'm looking at it. I'm sad our plans for Wonderlist didn't work out. Um, acquisitions right. are hard. Accompli, which is now Outlook Mobile, worked out perfectly. That's life. So right. he thinks... When they bought Accompli, that even though they killed Accompli and right. and turned it into Outlook, that one worked, but the one but, with his company did not. But that, for some this reason. kind of this supports my point. Well, aside from the, what I said earlier about the fact that yeah. uh, Microsoft has actually updated to do quite a bit, by the way. Yeah. Um, Accompli, which became Outlook Mobile, this is the central mobile product in Microsoft's arsenal, right? I mean. This right, is an important is pretty app. big. Yeah. By the way, one of the things you could do in Outlook is uh, make, make to-do lists. It <laughs> Just yeah. saying, you know, it, it's they have not, a lot of they have a lot of task management products. <laughs> Microsoft. Yeah, they do. <laughs> yep. And by the way, again, not uh, you know, Marcus and those guys. One of the things they have done since uh, he came to Berlin was to integrate those to-do and task lists. Right. You know, Microsoft. Mm -hmm. I think probably separate from Marcus and that team. Uh, did that work with Outlook.com and with Outlook, the, uh, the desktop application, with Outlook on the web, to make those things all kind of the same thing, right? Because they had different names and were built differently using different technologies. Um, OneNote is something that could be used as a kind of a to-do type application, it, among its other features. Sticky Notes is something on the far end of the spectrum, even simpler than Microsoft to do. You could do to make to-do lists. Um, and the, those three things all sync together now. Um, and you can use them interchangeably in some ways. So, again, <laughs> I just don't. We're talking about a to-do list here. I, I, it's just, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, Aki I think it looks hires, great, by the way. Aki hires make a lot of sense when it comes to mm -hmm. first eliminating the competition, but also just yeah. enhancing what your current product is by hiring yep. what you see as pretty talented uh, talent. Yeah. Yeah. So, so did that guy go to Microsoft? He must have originally, right? He did, and then he quit. Right. Yeah, yeah. and then he quit. Yeah, I believe. I believe he, he did. I'm pretty sure he did. Yeah, it seems like he would have. You know, yeah. as you said, Microsoft have all of these different task capabilities. Um, why not hire someone like the the team at Wonderlist to help boost their mm -hmm. existing products? You know, it, yeah. it, it is what it well, is. Well, the, te the team at Wonderlist they did hire, right? That, a right. lot of the folks. Uh, Berlin are still those guys, like right. the original Wonderlist guys. Mm -hmm. um, Christian Reber, by the way, you know what he's making now? His his new thing. It's a PowerPoint competitor. <laughs> called Pitch. <laughs> is it really? <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Look, that, there's certainly uh, room in the market for simpler tools uh, that do things that complex yep, sure. legacy apps do. I mean, that's fine. 
Um, but you know, it's it, we're getting to the point now where if you're learning a programming language, your first you know couple of projects are uh, an RSS reader, a to do list. Uh, you know, like I mean, these are just like basic basics. They're basic apps. I mean, I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, calculators, things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Somebody somebody asked me once um, when. I was starting out covering Microsoft. They're like, well, wouldn't you rather cover a company that just makes like one really cool product? And I'm like, no, I like <laughs> no. covering a company that makes everything. I, that's what I like <laughs> about it. I'm never bored because I'm always covering something different. Yeah, right. And I feel yeah. like when you're one company with one thing and that's your one trick pony kind of thing, I don't know. Like, Oh, that would get that's boring. It. Yeah, that would get boring you, pretty way, quickly as a content creator, you know? Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, Mary Jo, I don't know how your, your brain works along these lines, but um, I've been writing this uh, series of articles that deals with the past, and I've been reacquainting myself with, you know, products and technologies and blah, blah, whatever, all the stuff from 20 years ago or longer. Yeah. And I, I, it is astonishing uh, how much Microsoft announced, made or didn't make or went down some path and then walked away from it. Like, they mm -hmm. have abandoned so many things. I can't, I don't, I, once I see it again, I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that. But I, the, these things have exited my brain because there are just so mm -hmm. many of them. It's astonishing. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. how many things Microsoft has done. Yeah. Good, good, bad, indifferent, you know? Yeah. Remember when they were buying healthcare companies left and right? <laughs> like, yeah, I, yeah, I remember right. that. And right now they're stepping away from healthcare, you know, I at know. least on consumer Well, side. doing it in a different they're, way. They were going right? to buy yeah. Yahoo. Right? Yeah, Ugh, I remember that. <laughs> they were going to buy into it. They were, I mean, like, yeah. let's talk acquisitions, right? Yeah. They bought a Quantive yeah. because Google got uh, Double Click or whatever. The, uh, mm. What's the ad company they bought? The big one. Um, Wasn't it Double Click? Like, double yeah, Click is that the right name? Yeah. I think so. Um, and then that was a huge watch. They bought Nokia and then <laughs> wrote off $7.5 billion. <laughs> oh, uh, I mean, man. just stuff like that is incredible, you know? Yep. And this guy's talking about a to-do list. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't matter. S small know. potatoes, right? Yeah, it's, just cra it's crazy. <laughs> Outstanding. Um, let's move into Mr. Therat's musical approach here with Microsoft. Uh, <laughs> So hold on, we missed. Uh, we, we actually skipped a couple of things here. Uh oh, we did. Um, oh right, yeah, there we go. Yeah, we got. I've been the time sorry. I think I've been messing around with the notes while we're doing this. Oh man, I see you now. Sorry. Hold on, go back. Go yeah. Back. Oh wait, we should talk about today's Windows build, right? Because there's a new Windows build out. Oh god. Okay. How do we? Let me let me readjust okay. my brain for that one. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I mean, actually, we, there's not a lot to say about it. We'll go ahead and do an ad while we sort okay. out yeah, this here. Yeah, uh, okay. This here okay. notes Recap real here. quick. So let's go ahead and, yeah. and okay. give a recognition to our folks at Express VPN. This episode of Windows Weekly is brought to you by Express VPN. If you believe you're not getting snooped on or nobody cares about your online data, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, folks, you are wrong. I know since you listen to the shows here on our network, you understand that your online privacy is always under attack, whether it's from a, a hacker, whether it's just the government snooping on you, or even your own internet provider just, just taking a look at your data and trying to figure out what you're doing and heck, sometimes selling it off to others. Uh, that's why here at TWIT, we recommend protecting your online privacy and using a VPN service, ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN runs in the background on your computer or your phone, and you can use, this, use your internet just as you normally would. Download the app, click connect, and that's it. You're protected. It's that easy. Personally, I never go online without ExpressVPN, and you shouldn't either. ExpressVPN is the fastest VPN I've tried, and it costs less than $7 a month, and it comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. The key thing about ExpressVPN is it uses cutting-edge server technology called Trusted Server. So Trusted Server prevents the operating system and the apps from ever writing to your hard drive. So this is a whole new standard in privacy and security. It's time to stop hackers, big brother, and internet companies from grabbing all of your data, folks. Take back your online privacy just like I did with ExpressVPN. So now, protect your online privacy today 
and find out how you can get three extra months free with the one-year package at expressvpn.com slash windows. Again, that's expressvpn.com slash windows for three extra months free with the one-year package. Okay, so visit expressvpn.com slash windows to learn more. And we appreciate ExpressVPN for their support. All right. So we jump back over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this this doesn't even need a lot of coverage, but um, Microsoft just put out a new 20H1 test build right before we did Windows Weekly today. Build 18980. Oh, really? And... Um, What's new in this build? So the biggest thing to me is Windows Subsystem for Linux 2 now supports yep. ARM64 devices as of this test build, um, which is kind of a big deal. Then yep. uh, a couple other things is Microsoft starting to roll out the Cortana, a separate Cortana app to all insiders worldwide who are in areas where it is supported um, and also they're rolling out to all fast ring insiders worldwide, the new optional feature setting that is part of this build. That, that's about it. Lots of fixes, updates. Yep. So is that what <laughs> happened with my laptop during the, the kickoff <laughs> no. of this are broadcast? You in, are you in the insider program, by the way, or no? <laughs> oh, no, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> no, you don't I want just, any part of that. Just thought it was perfect yeah. timing. Yeah, <laughs> yep. it really was. I know. So yeah. it was patch Tuesday yesterday, right? So you probably got whatever the cumulative update was. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's right. I didn't even think about yep. that. Patch yep. Tuesday. See, I actually knew about that, unlike Mr. Micah Sargent. <laughs> <laughs> it was yep. fun trying to explain Patch Tuesday to someone who has never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you always it was. I actually found that to be kind of interesting because we just sort of accept that this is the way the world is. And once you, yep. when you try to logic through why it is that way to someone who's never heard of it, it, it sounds crazy. Like it's just, it actually doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and I thought that was just kind of interesting. Outstanding. Outstanding. Well, the other one, the other one that I think Paul should talk about is your phone uh, calling functionality coming oh, to the handsets. Yep. Yeah. 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 So, um, Let's see. Uh, back in August, late August, uh, Samsung had that Note 10 event, and Microsoft yeah. was actually a big part of it. Just like Microsoft, for some reason, is a big part of the right. Samsung Galaxy Note 10. Mm -hmm. uh, well, they're kind of a part of it. I mean, this, I think there are four apps bundled. But the big thing is, one of the big things is, uh, in the on the Samsung devices, they actually have an icon in the notification shade that connects you more immediately to the Your Phone app in Windows 10. Um, other any Android phone user can use this thing, but you have to go, you know, find the app, the Your Phone Companion app. You have to install it. There's a kind of a weird rigmarole you go through on either side to get those two things connected. So Samsung has and Microsoft have really streamlined that, right? And that will probably drive usage of that. That's cool. Um, but they had Microsoft on stage to demo a feature that was coming in the future, and at the time it wasn't clear if that feature would be Samsung specific or if it would be available to everybody. And that feature is. Uh, phone calling and receiving from the Your Phone app in Windows 10. So in other words, you have your, your phone is connected wirelessly to your PC. You're getting notifications. You're getting text messages. You can see your 25 most recent photos. You can actually run the, uh, depending on your handset, the, all the Samsung support, this, certainly the flagships. Um, you can get a remote view of your actual phone screen. So you can interact with it with your finger or your uh, you know keyboard and mouse or your pen if you have that. Um, and then there's this new feature for phone calling, and um, that's that's kind of the final you know piece of the puzzle when you think about it. Mm -hmm. You know, you're sitting at your computer; you don't want to have to task switch between the phone and the computer. You can do everything through the computer, right? Um, and so this past week, what we discovered was that it, this is in fact coming to non-Samsung handsets. A gentleman, um, I think he's in India, has gotten it working on his. Um, I don't even remember the kind of phone, but it's a. I think it's a Chinese phone that they sell in India. Not a Samsung phone, so it, it does it, it does work on non-Samsung phones. So it appears that this will be coming um, to everybody, probably in the 20H1 time frame, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. We'll probably see it mm -hmm. probably appear late in the year and early next year, et cetera. So, so do you think you'll use this, by the way? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, in a word. Yeah. I'm, I'm not so sure about it. I don't know. 
I, I'm I really like honest. being able to text from my computer. I do right? too. Same. Me too. Um, and but what about honestly, phone calls? If yeah, so if this works well, like in other words, I assume what you'll be using is whatever camera or I'm um, sorry, microphone and uh, speakers you have connected, right? Or headsets, yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. um, it's certainly a convenience. I mean, I don't know yeah. what the connectivity requirements are, et cetera, but um, it, it seems like a good idea, you know? Yeah. I'm not a Samsung user, but I mm -hmm. try my best to keep my phone somewhat connected to my computer because I do make phone calls through like Google mm. Voice and it works really well and it's so much more oh, convenient. Um, yeah. And I do SMS through through the through the computer because it yeah. a lot of times I have no idea where my phone is when I'm at home. Mm -hmm. It's it's just, yeah, yeah it's nearby or whatever. It's somewhere but, you know, and I'll yeah. I'll hear it ringing and the dog will run after it, but I have no just idea. The bigger <laughs> keyboard, you know, to me is the big thing there, but. Um, you know, for my, look, this is a win-win, right? So obviously if you don't need it or don't want it, that's cool. Right. It doesn't impact you. Yeah, right. But right. Um, for Microsoft, it makes Windows 10 more viable to this huge audience of people using smartphones all day, every day. And that's smart mm -hmm. for them. It's good for Windows. But um, I think for a lot of users, uh, because mo most people probably do, you know, they go to work or they're whatever, working at home or whatever it is, they're on a computer. Mm -hmm. um, not having to you know, <laughs> do this it, kind of thing. It is, really makes yeah. a difference. It yeah. really yeah, makes nice. a difference in productivity, you know, at least so in my it experience. Has to work. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it has to work. I mean, that's the thing. So yeah. I, I will say to date, I have found, you know, Google has uh, a web-based version of their messages app. So if you use that text messaging application on your phone, that's, that has had better performance for me as far as it, uh, things appearing immediately and so forth. Um, but if Microsoft can get this whole thing to work, text messages as well as phone calls and have it, you know, just just work, like just correctly work. Um, right. I, I think this would be a big deal. Yeah. Now, uh, a polar fant in the chat room says maybe a portable surface speaker could have this type of capability, too. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, technically yeah. speaking, I suppose you could probably use a Bluetooth speaker with a microphone to do this kind of thing with just, just with your phone. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, most people mm -hmm. probably wouldn't care where things were coming from as long as it worked. Right. As long I as mean, it works. That's it. Yeah. As long as it yeah. works. That's fascinating. And I, like I said, I like the fact that this is not necessarily limited to the Samsung brand. Yeah. Um, that would be, uh, that would be a mistake. I think on Microsoft's part, but it looks like it's going to be everybody. So very yeah. nice. Yeah. Very nice. All right. So now can can we can we talk about the musical? I'm I'm no. totally fascinated. Uh, because <laughs> <laughs> there is one more thing. Oh no, As I see. We, we say in Apple Land. Just teasing. Um, what, do you, what, do you, what do you want to talk, Tom? Tom? Yeah, this is, I think it's important just to throw this out there. Okay. There it is. Um, so Microsoft has this I don't even know what you would call it. It's it's not a product. It's not a service necessarily. It's a platform. I hate using the word platform, but it is a platform. It's called it the Microsoft platform. Connected Vehicle Platform, MCVP. So this is something that Microsoft goes out to uh, anybody who's in the transportation business, car makers, truck makers, drone makers, and they pitch to them, hey, wouldn't it be cool if you could take your vehicle and hook it up on the back end to our services Things like Azure, um, AI services, machine learning services, uh, especially Internet of Things type services for collecting information from sensors and harnessing all of that into a big data lake. I had to say data lake. It's awesome. <laughs> um, <laughs> wouldn't that be great if you could do that? So this is a thing they have and they go out and sell this instead of the old days when they used to sell the idea of embedding windows in your car. They've stopped doing that. That's right. that's no longer a thing. Um, yeah. So um, they've been adding piece by piece different integrations and partners for this M uh, Microsoft Connected Vehicle platform. This week they added TomTom. So TomTom now is providing navigation uh, technology to Microsoft that is incorporated into this platform. Um. The reason I think this is really interesting is I don't know that people understand exactly how Microsoft sells to some vertical markets these days. 
They make a big deal out of the fact that they don't compete head to head with companies who are in this space. So, you know, when you hear about Amazon doing its own work in autonomous vehicles or Google doing that, Microsoft doesn't do that. Instead, they say to their partners who are making autonomous vehicles or doing research in that space, hey, we've got some back end services that might help you build a platform like that. We would like you to use our back end right. services. We are not going to make autonomous vehicles or software for driving autonomous vehicles. That's not what we do. We are here to be kind of your uh, under the yeah. covers not, integration it's, platform. It's not a Trojan horse, right? It is not. The, the other right. thing that I think it's important for people to understand, because of course, uh, one of the things we're kind of sensitive to in the Microsoft space is how we have lost the entire consumer market to Apple and Google and other companies and so forth. And so everybody is probably familiar that with the fact that most new cars have or have available to them Apple CarPlay or uh, right. Google, what's the Google thing? Android. Android Auto. Auto, whatever it's yeah. called. Um, <laughs> yeah. And those things are great, you know, when you want to integrate your phone with the thing. But you see, you know, you see the Apple and the Google logos, you see the Android logo, whatever. I mean, it's kind of in your face and it's, it's you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, and obviously Microsoft with Cortana and a lot of their kind of consumer facing stuff hasn't really fared the same way. But yeah. this connected car platform, honestly, I mean, even just looking at passenger vehicles, um, the mm -hmm. two major partners here are Volkswagen, which is the number one seller of cars in the world, by the way. And then a, mm -hmm. a consortium that includes companies. I think it's uh, Renault and Mitsubishi and Nissan and one other. Yeah. I don't remember the fourth one. Mm -hmm. um, so this is actually a fairly significant chunk of the of the market. But again, the, the thing that they're making is not like a third option that slots in next to CarPlay and Android Auto. Android Auto and CarPlay, in fact, would run on top of a car mm -hmm. platform that might be the one Microsoft makes and might come from other companies. I think BlackBerry is involved in this space because of their, uh, what's their real-time OS called? It doesn't matter, but whatever that thing is, that's that's a big player in the car space as well. But it's a different part of the market, you know? And um, yeah. again, it's just a, just a reminder, you know, uh, you're not going to see a Microsoft logo when the thing boots up, right? It's not going to be a Windows logo. You're not going to click a start button, you know, on the car to start your car that has a, like a Windows <laughs> logo on it or something. Uh, it's not like that. But that doesn't mean that Microsoft can't be a, like a big chunk of that space. And mm -hmm. the future of Microsoft would keep saying, you know, it's the cloud and everything. I mean, this is, this is them being successful in the car market in a way when they were very visible with Windows Automotive or whatever it was called in different years, they just never were, you know? And so... Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, this is a bigger deal than I think a lot of people may understand. I'm still trying to wrap my head around this. Is this more like a kernel level to put it in language? Yeah, you term? think of it, to the, it's like the back end car platform. Okay. You know, in other words, yeah. you've got a, you've got a, a unit in the dashboard that provides radio and satellite radio and CarPlay and Android Auto and this other things. But one of the, one of the things that it supplies is navigation services right, right. of its own. A lot of people might choose to use Google Maps, and you know, with Android Auto or something, whatever. But right. most cars will have their own in-dash something. Mm -hmm. And that thing could be running, you know, Nokia here. It could be running TomTom. Tom. It could be, you know, you don't really know because it's branded BMW or it's branded Nissan or whatever the company is. All right, um, I see. A lot of those, the, but there's a software platform that thing's running on. And uh, for a mm -hmm. lot of cars, some percentage, some double-digit percentage, it's this Microsoft connected car platform or whatever the name of the platform is. Yeah. So, you know, again, Microsoft it's Microsoft connected vehicle. Yes, because <laughs> it's not just cars. Um, right. Yeah. So, you know, again, it's not sexy. It's not fun. It's not neat for a consumer. Um, but, you know, that's Microsoft's goal is to always, you know, this is funny. It's, this, is, this was their vision, right? We were just talking about this. That mm -hmm. Nathan Mervold, he wanted to get a VIG on every transaction that occurred on the Internet. Remember? This is, yep, they're right. not going to get one on every transaction, <laughs> but this is, but this is how they get into it, right? It's they're a pretty they large fingerprint involved. that they could have, yeah. you know, pretty large yeah. footprint. Yeah. Yep. So that's just kind of, kind of interesting. Yeah. Yep. You don't really hear about these companies. Like I happen to live in, there's a company in my uh, home, in my town here, the nearby here that's headquartered called Air Products and they're humongous and they're about to move their headquarters and Nobody outside of this little area has probably ever heard of this company, and they they make they make literally air products. They make gases <laughs> that they sell to companies like Samsung, who need perfectly clean spaces to make screens in, and they need a special formulation of gas for that to you know occur within or whatever. And that's that's who makes this stuff. They're the mm. GE of this world or whatever, and uh, you don't ever hear about them. They kind of operate in the back somewhere. 
and uh, they're humongous. <laughs> you know, and it's just yeah. uh, that's just you know Microsoft everyone's heard of obviously, now, but see, I mean that that sort of makes me think of on like on a smaller scale, like this laptop is MSI. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Nine times out of ten, when I think of MSI, I'm thinking of motherboards and and all of the internals right. inside of all of the windows machines that are out there that nobody cracks open to take a look at they just know that they're <laughs> yep. whatever brand laptop that they have is a brand laptop that they have whether it's hp dell or what have you but on the yeah. inside there's little msi just getting their piece mm -hmm. of the piece of the pie too from that transaction oh sure is that I mean, what you're uh, saying actually yeah in the pc space yeah. you know uh we, we this came up in the show some time ago um there are companies who are pc makers now like asus Right. That used to be ODMs. They used to make the the motherboards and the platforms that Dell would use, and other and probably HP as well, Compaq, whoever at the time. Um, you know, you would Dell uh, would probably design a case or something that would fit around this thing that the other company supplied. But there, you know, that was there was a company. No one had ever heard of them. Except, well, Dell heard of them, but I mean, the right. you know, to the buyer, they were nobody. And then mm -hmm. sometime in the early two thousands, they. And probably MSI might have done the same thing uh, in whatever time frame. Said, you know, we could make even more money if we just sold these things ourselves. <laughs> and <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. Outstanding. All right. So. ODM, what was that? Original device manufacturer, I think. Yes, correct. Yeah, like the Dell computers, like uh, for many years, I don't know how they do it now, but they were just rebrand. They were just repackaged Asus and other computer, you know, other ODM designs. Mm -hmm. Yep. When I when I heard about this particular laptop, um, it, it sort of caught me off guard. I was like, MSI don't make laptops. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. they don't yeah, it's like don't they make ram right you, <laughs> you know, know, who, you know. Where, yeah. where did this come right. from but then i started to think a little more about like acer and just like you said mm -hmm. with asus and I, and I said okay maybe this yep. makes a little more sense um and it did because they they, mm -hmm. they know yeah. about the innards if you will as far as getting the yeah. hardware right and partnering up partnering up with all of the right people to, to make it work. And mm -hmm. it doesn't have that same flashy, you know, big uh, circle right. with yeah. a D or anything like that. But it's this is a substantial laptop and does a mm -hmm. really good job, you know, so. Yeah, and I bet if you were to buy a Dell, or not to keep singling out Dell, but, you know, Dell, right. HP, whatever it is, that had the same specs and everything, would probably be a lot more expensive because a company like mm -hmm. MSI can be profitable at a smaller price Different point. margins. And it's still... A, <laughs> yeah, and you know, yeah. Uh, like a comp like these bigger H, you know, HP, Lenovo, who are, you know, the big uh, PC companies, you know, there's there's a big business you have to keep running there. <laughs> you know, so it's like uh, <laughs> you know, you're kind of paying for that a little bit. Um, yeah. And then they get economics to scale too that helps and maybe tilt it back in their favor in some ways. But um, yeah, I mean, that's I think the reason why you know OnePlus is such a favorite for certain uh, buyers of phones, and um, and I'm sure there are people who love Acer or Asus or any of the companies are in the United States, at least are kind of smaller PC makers. Um, you know, they're unique looking, they're different, they're often cheaper. It's, you know, you know, it's, it's understandable. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. Away. All right. So, um, I, 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 all right. Yes. Now, now you may finally, I could, I couldn't <laughs> wait. It just, <laughs> This yeah. brings me so much joy to see this 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 Microsoft uh, musical video as they discuss what is what is like to 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 work for a big software giant like this. And the first thing that came to my mind was Samsung, because I, I could see Samsung doing something like this, this type of production, or even Google. Yeah. Um, but I, yeah. I never would have thought Microsoft, because Microsoft is so. So much yeah, more rigid and, and straightforward, yeah. and but they're not really. I mean, not really. <laughs> I think it's cool that they did. I'm not. A, I'm not a musical guy. Um, I've the musicals, musicals I've actually gone she to. Hates yeah, musicals. I've, <laughs> I've literally I fallen hate asleep comedy in every, and musicals. every musical. Oh my wow. goodness! <laughs> there will be no musical <laughs> laughter in Mary Jo's life. There will never um, be. No. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna go ahead and play this video here. Oh yeah. no! I can see my screen. No. <laughs> I think it's cute. I mean, it's not my kind of thing, but it, it's it's cute. 
How do you feel about the word dreamt? Dreamt. Dreamt. <laughs> dreamt. Yeah. I think dreamt. I think that's just yet another problem in the English language, the which is why. Wasn't I it. The way it is today. Here's a yeah. dream that changed the world and how it came to stay. There once was a man <laughs> whose eyesight was bad, but his vision was crystal clear. This is gold. He had no instruction, production, nor junction at which he could ask a peer. He looked a line that was clearly defined and declined to a line by its rigid design. But instead, rigid. he sought to differ from those stifling narrow straits. He then became a household name in all the 50 states. His rise to fame was so ordained, now written by the fates. He changed the world forever, and his name, his name was Bill Gates. <laughs> Wait a second. Oh. I'm not Bill Gates. Well, of course you aren't Bill Gates. Yet. Yet. Bill Gates isn't a kid anymore. These days, Bill Gates is more <laughs> of an idea. Our yeah, buddy right. Bill, he had a dream that long ago did seem Guys, we aren't going to watch the whole thing. But no, <laughs> we won't watch the whole thing. <laughs> that's, 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 it just, uh, yeah, I never would have expected this from the team at Microsoft. Now it's so much more than just a dream. It's all happening here. It may have taken an IV of pure caffeine. Come see what followed from the personal machine. Okay, we can cut it there. Yeah, I think we're good. So that, that girl in the red top, there's a moment where they make fun of uh, Windows Phone and her, the expression on her face is the funniest <laughs> thing I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> no, and you know, okay, I hate musicals. I really do. But I will give them credit that if you're going to do something like this, you at least have to do it really well. And they yeah, did. Yeah, they went full bore <laughs> on yeah. this one. Oh, they yeah. really they went for it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, it's in, it was a project by uh, handled mostly by the summer interns uh, with some employees mixed in, and it took them mm -hmm. nights, weekends. Um, it oh yeah, you can tell this was take quite a while. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So you got to give them you got to give them appreciation for that. But when I saw it, I was just like, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's just, you can you can feel the cringe growing. You know. I know. I know. Yeah, Mary Jo, you're saying this is not the Microsoft you're used to. Is that what you're saying? No, it's not. I like the evil empire Microsoft. I have to admit, right. guys. I know. Yeah, cue the song, like, like Imperial March from Star Wars, and yeah. Bill Gates yeah. comes in and points at like a map and decides to destroy a company. I miss yeah. those days. Yeah, that was Me the too. best. It was. I love it. We're showing I our age. <laughs> I love it, and I think it was a good a, a good route to take this time of day, <laughs> this day and age, with so much um, negative uh, vibes out there in the world of technology and the big tech companies. And I thought that was just a, a nice little change up of pace myself. All right, um, we're going to take another break here uh, before we get into our Q and A and tips and picks. Go ahead and thank the folks at Wasabi, Wasabi Hot Cloud Storage. Today's episode of Windows Weekly is brought to you by Wasabi Hot Cloud Storage. Wasabi is a low-cost, high-speed, fully secure storage that blows away the competition, including that of Google and Microsoft. Now, Gartner Group, this is one of the leading uh, uh, research firms out there, they're saying that by 2025, 80% of enterprises will have shut down their traditional data center versus 10% today. Now, analysts also expect a massive migration to the cloud for its associated cost savings, operational efficiencies, and transformative way of scaling your business. So data storage is going to be a massive concern. By uh, 2025, we're estimating of seeing about 163 zettabytes of storage out there, data out there. That's like 21 zeros, folks. That's that's a huge amount of data. So being able to efficiently and affordably store that data is critical for business to innovate and gain competitive advantage. Companies will need to store this data in the cloud, but there are many concerns, of course, when you start talking about cloud storage. Fortunately, Wasabi addresses all of those concerns with their disruptive technology 
that is turning the industry on its ear. So what they're doing with their technology is instead of laying the data down in blocks on the disk, they're laying it down se sequentially. That's a big difference there. So Wasabi is enterprise class cloud storage that is 80% cheaper than those other brands out there and is up to six times faster. Plus, you're going to get 11 nines in durability, immutable storage, and data redundancy. It's more secure in most cases than your on-premise storage solution, not to mention that it's HIPAA, FINRA, and CJIS compliant. So now, go ahead and calculate savings for yourself and start a free trial of unlimited storage for a month. Go to wasabi.com, click the free trial link, and enter the code WINDOWS. Okay? So join the movement. Migrate your data to the cloud with confidence. Go to wasabi.com and make sure you use the offer code WINDOWS. We thank Wasabi for their support. All right. So now we can head on into our tips. Tips of the week. Let's see. We have Mr. Therat discussing yep. Microsoft is offering up $650 on the trade-in for your Galaxy Note 10 or Note 10 yep. Plus. That's a lot of money. Up to 650 So Up if to you, 650 the, uh, it, Yeah, if you, um, I actually bought one of these phones in part because I was able to get $600 on trade on a Google Pixel 3 XL that I had bought at half price. So I actually earned another $100. Wow. <laughs> you know, just, yeah, so it was kind of like a <laughs> no-brainer for me. But uh, I thought 600 bucks was great, but actually Microsoft is offering up to 650 um, so you got to move quick because I think this, uh, it's a limited time offer and I think it's through, let me see if I can find the date, sorry. September um, 22nd. There you go. So about 10 more days, 11 more days. Um, if you have a recent phone, and this is probably going to be like the S10 series, uh, newer iPhones, um, including the 10R, by the way, um, you can get up, you can get $650 on trade uh, if you buy a Galaxy Note 10 or Note 10 Plus from Microsoft. Um, the, there's a couple of catches, of course. You have to do it at a retail store. Um, so you have to have one near you. You have to be in the United States or Canada, I guess, or Puerto Rico, which right. is the United States. Um, but uh, that is an additional $50. And so, you know, why not? If you, if you were going to do this <laughs> anyway, um, that's a neat way to get an additional $50. That's another way for uh, Samsung to leave their mark in the consumer space mm -hmm. of, of just saying, hey, mm -hmm. we, want, we want more of our devices out there in everyone's hands, you know, including the yeah. iPhone holders, you know, that's pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, if you bought a um, an iPhone XR last summer, last uh, September, rather, for $750 and Microsoft would give you $650 for that thing a year later. Yeah. I mean, that's crazy. Like, that's a crazy <laughs> resale value on that phone. So, Something to look into. Um, for people who are uh, already readers of my book, Windows 10 Field Guide, it has been, it took about 15 minutes, but I updated it for 19H2. Um, there really aren't that many new features again for end users. So um, that's available now at leanpub.com slash Windows 10 Field Guide. Um, and if you haven't bought it, you can go there too. <laughs> and then uh, I think the game officially finally came out for everybody either today or yesterday, but Gears 5... Last week, it shipped in kind of early access for people who uh, pre-ordered the Ultimate Edition or for people on Xbox, uh, what's it called, the Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. And then it became available to other audiences over time. Uh, but my tip is uh, not to buy this game. <laughs> okay. <laughs> honestly, I don't think it's that great. But if you do want to play Gears 5, uh, there is a much cheaper way to do it, which is to sign up for uh, Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. Uh, if you do that, the first two months only cost $2.00. Two months is plenty of time. If you just played this one game, mm -hmm. if that's all you did for two months, you could kill the subscription and, and move on from there. But obviously, you might want to check out Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. Otherwise, this gives you over 100 games to play on both the console, Xbox One, and on Windows 10 PCs. Um, but you get Gears 5 with it. So why why spend 60 bucks on Gears, or more, right, depending on the version? That's quite a um, value. You get it for two bucks. Yeah, yeah that's quite a tip. value. Yeah, and then... From uh, App Pick, I actually I have two. Um, Vivaldi is an interesting Chromium-based uh, web browser. It has been available on desktop for a couple of years now. It's made by the guy who originally started Opera. Its claim to fame is that, well, of course, it turns off a bunch of the Google tracking stuff, but also it's probably the most customizable browser available. It's really it's actually pretty interesting in that note. But 
I never really used it because they never had a mobile client. And also their, their uh, I guess we'll call it device to device sync client was non-existent at first and it was kind of bulky and weird and now it actually kind of works. But uh, they're finally moving to mobile. They just released their first version on Android. It does do sync. Um, so you might want to just check it out. Um, I think the baseline for any browser you're going to use is it has to work everywhere and you have to be able to get all your data everywhere. So um, this might be something. Now you're like saying this out. is from the same team that, that started the Opera browser? Is that what you're saying? I'm not sure about the team, but the man who founded Opera founded Vivaldi. Okay. Left Opera and started. I've used Opera uh, on the mobile device. I have to check this out on mobile. Yeah, it's um, yeah, and you know it's got some unique UI stuff going on. Uh, they use actually for Windows Phone fans, they have kind of a a tile based system which they use for bookmarks. Um, oh, nice. It's kind of a neat. It's a neat product. I mean, it, I was always aware of it. I never could use it because I never had a mobile client, but now they do, so it's possibly viable. And it's based on Chromium, so you know it's going to work with everything. So that's good. Right. And the other one is, I don't remember when this came out, but a couple of months back, somehow, I think on GitHub, it was real that Microsoft was bringing back the Power Toys, which you remember, I think debuted on Windows 95. They had versions for 98 and probably other versions of Windows. Um, there used to be tons of these tools, and a lot of them were really, really cool. Some of them were even integrated into Windows at a later date. Um, and they announced a, a slew of them that will be coming. Only two are available now. One of them is kind of lame. One of them is just a like a screen overlay that will show you all of the keyboard shortcuts you can use with the Windows key on the keyboard. But the other one is really useful. In fact, I got to, let me just look it up because I don't remember. The name is terrible. They should have called it Power Snap because basically if you're familiar with Snap, uh, the Windows feature, you know you can snap windows to the sides of the screen. You can actually snap them to the corners as well. And you, as well. you can do things like that. Um, this feature, is, it's actually called Fancy Zones, which is terrible. But basically, it allows you to snap windows into specific zones on the screen. You can create all these uh, layouts, and you can actually create templates for layouts, and you can position things the way you want them. It, looks, it actually looks pretty cool. Um, there will be many more of these things. I have suggestions for some that <laughs> Microsoft or others may make. You know, one thing I'd love to see in Windows, by the way, just on this note, is um, the ability to center the icons in the tabar in the center of the taskbar. Right, oh, like they're okay. always jammed up against the yeah, left side. They're always like, on the like, side, right? Yeah, I'd like to have them centered, you know. And by the way, there are utilities that do that. There's one in the store that has a name like, I think it's Falcon. Look up if you look up Falcon in the Microsoft store, you can find it on the web too. But um, uh, that will do that, and I, I, I think it looks better. And I know it's a Mac kind of a thing, but I, I think it looks great and is more usable because it's. I tend to work in the middle of the screen, All right? So you know, the stuff I want is right there. Just a thought. Now, this fan, <laughs> getting to this back to this fancy zones, it, uh, mm -hmm. you, you're you can basically configure it as if it's just your own little workspace. I mean, how this how would probably, you? Yeah. So this is um, if you think about organizing windows on screen. Uh, obviously, Microsoft has um, you know tiling capabilities and Snap, like I said, and right. there are virtual desktops you can use. There are third party utilities like uh, Starbucks. A uh, start. Hello. Star Dock. Star <laughs> Docks, Starbucks. yes. Uh, Star, Star Dock <laughs> makes a utility called Fences, uh, which uh, arranges, I believe that Fences is actually just for icons on screen. I don't, I don't think it's actually for Windows. But this reminds me of Fences in that it creates zones on the screen where you can put apps, app windows into those zones. So instead of having just like these kind of, um, you know, uh, two apps, four apps, you know, whatever it might be, you can actually just kind of right. arrange them so they're always in a particular layout. And then, of course, they can be made to be persistent so you can get them back later. Um, yeah. So it's just kind of an interesting, you know, if, if as a power user you thought that Snap was cute but maybe not configurable enough or it didn't do enough, I, I think this looks like the next logical um, direction for that kind of functionality. Like, I, I don't know, window, I guess it's just window management. I'm not sure what else to call it. Right. On-screen window management. I've always liked the Snap feature, but it never was perfect for whatever scenario that I was in. Yeah. It, it was nice to have yep. one snap, but then the other four or five windows that I had, they were just sort of hodgepodge. And, you know. Yeah, and actually, if you right-click your taskbar today, you'll see a feature that dates back probably to Windows 95 where you can, like, cascade windows. Remember? They were, like, oh, man. Kind of come up. Or you can stack machine. windows. <laughs> yeah, so, like, yeah. that stuff's still in Windows. <laughs> you know, like, um, but this, again, you know, you kind of see the progression, and I think this, it's kind of interesting. I like this has the potential they got to change the name. It's terrible, but it has the potential to be a window management feature that Microsoft might want to put in Windows. And on that note, that's kind of cool because that is what happened to a bunch of the old uh, the old power tools back in the 90s. Right. 
Guys, all I'm going to say is Fancy Zones, the musical. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yep. yep. That Mr. is That's a terrible name. New, Fancy Zones, probably my what? New, my new Twitter <laughs> handle will be at Mr. Fancy Zones. <laughs> <laughs> I Come on, it. change your Twitter name. I, I like, I'd like to see that. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. All right. Uh-oh, did my mouse quit? There we go. All right, so now we have our Enterprise Picks of the Week. And uh, this is from, um, this is an evaluation, I believe, right? Mm-hmm. It is. So um, if you know what Microsoft Defender Advanced Threat Protection is, Microsoft ATP used to be called, I believe, Windows ATP. Uh, What it is is a security platform for prevention, post-breach detection, and investigation. Um, If you don't have a big lab at your company, but you still want to test out features in Defender ATP, Microsoft, as of today, made generally available its ATP Evaluation Lab. So this is for people who are already customers of ATP if you want to check out new features that have been added to it or okay. brand new customers who haven't bought it yet. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can do a free trial. You can do things like um, start a free trial, request a quote, um, provision up to three machines with one click. And so you can test out things like Windows 10, Office, Sys Internals, Java, and a lot more in terms of what kinds of security features these are all getting. Um, the way you access this, according to Microsoft's blog post today about it, is go to evaluation and tutorials and then pick the evaluation lab directly from the navigation menu. And if you want to find out more, just search docs.microsoft.com for a Defender ATP Evaluation Lab and you can get all the details right there. Fascinating. All right. Now, so this is more like a sandboxing environment, yeah, if you will? It is, yes. Okay. So you can test out scenarios and just see, you know, how things would work without having to actually spin up the machines okay. yourself. Yeah. Interesting. I, I sort of remember seeing that acronym of WATP years yeah. we, ago. It, <laughs> it's, it's such a mouthful, right? Every time we talk about it on Windows Weekly, you'd be like, Windows Defender yep. Advanced Threat Protection ATP. It's like, yeah, it's a lot of words, but it's a security <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Have to just sort of spit it out. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Outstanding. All right. So now we'll take a look at the code name pick of the week. Uh, is this manganese? Is this how you say this? Manganese? Think back to your. High school periodic table of the elements. Oh boy, I, right? I, so, I struggled with chemistry and all of that. Oh my gosh, chemistry almost well, made me retire from the science world. Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, then you may not be happy how Microsoft is codenaming its <laughs> Windows releases these days, Yay. because. They're using the same structure that Azure uses. So Azure has been using periodic table of the elements for their code names. And in Azure, what they call, they don't call these things half. You know how we call 20H1, 20H2. Uh-huh. In Azure land, they call these semesters for some reason. Oh, so, okay. Yes. Oh, so geez. right now we've, we're just about done with the vanadium, which is 19H2 semester. Like actually, you know, getting that out, not the planning part of it, but that that was done a long time ago. Vibranium is the code name for 20H1, um, which will be coming out around March, April of next year. But at Microsoft right now, they're in the middle of planning for the thing that follows 20H1. And the code name of that is manganese. That's what 20H2 is going to be codenamed. And... The most interesting thing for us Windows watchers about 20H2 is it'll be interesting to see what Microsoft does in terms of uh, updating Windows in that release. Because as we know, and Paul talked about earlier on the show, you know, we jumped ahead to 20H1 and then found out 19H2 was just going to be kind of like a cumulative update and with all the features turned off, so a very small update. We don't know yet if that's going to be the new normal, right? So 
we're mm. all going to be watching to see if manganese is another one of these small incremental updates with all the features turned off or if we go back to the old way of it being a full feature update again like we've had in the past for the second half release of windows asking you as a consumer what would you prefer you you, you like the point <laughs> updates i think the second half update should be a small catch-up update that fixes things um completes the, the fit and finish and that would also make it very happy that right. it's not a big honking update right i agree totally a little polish on it if you will but nothing too exactly crazy. yep <laughs> But that one is going to be called manganese because I, I don't know if you saw today when Microsoft rolled out their new 20H1 test build in the release <sighs> number for that, there was a dot VB. That was for vibranium. Vibranium. Yep. <laughs> Not for Visual Basic. Right. <laughs> and no, which some people were like, why did they call it the Visual Basic update? I'm like, eh, no. <laughs> That's why it's so mm -hmm. slow. They made mm -hmm. it with Visual Basic. <laughs> <laughs> nice. right. Yeah. Visual Basic gives me nightmares too. Like <laughs> You're like, chemistry. Don't, don't give me a flashback. <laughs> <laughs> I, I taught a class in Visual Basic, and literally the last two months just turned into a, it, it, like a never-ending series of demonstrations where it's like, "Here's code. What do you think it's going to do?" And everyone's like, oh, "Logically, of course, we'll do this." Like, nope. Nope. <laughs> and you would run it. It, would just, it was just amazing. <laughs> it was yeah. It was just. It was like an insane. It, the language itself is insane. <laughs> Yeah. Between, and they were all good students because they were right. They, this is what you. Th this is what it should do. You're uh, right. Yeah. It doesn't. I, I remember having class in between Java and between Visual Basic. It. It. it yeah. I had hair at one point. You know? <laughs> yeah. Java. I mean, Java has whatever problems it has, but as a language, Java is an excellent language. It is. That's a. It, it's a. It's it an is. excellent programming language. It is. But I'm. I'm just not a developer. I, I, my brain yeah. doesn't function that way. And <laughs> and those classes really, ooh, it really set yeah. me back. It's much wow. easier to just to pick up a camera and and you know focus and stuff <laughs> than writing code. So semesters versus versus halves, right? Yes. Yep. Well, we're, you, we're now seasons, we live in Azure's or? world now, people. Yep. We we aren't in the Windows world. We're in Azure. Semester. Azure God, that is so weird. Well, they do work on a campus. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> All right. So um, I noticed the the rundown changes. <laughs> Yes. When it, when it comes to picks of the week, it actually has my name on it. What is this madness? <laughs> so, you know, at the end of Windows Weekly, we, we typically do a beer pick of the week. Sometimes we do a drink pick of the week like we did for Patch yeah. Tuesday cocktail. But I heard you yeah. are kind of a whiskey aficionado. And so oh, I'm, I'm putting you on the spot. Really? Do you want to do a whiskey pick of the week? And you don't have to. Actually, I could do a beer pick. Before is you the, do it, or if, if you do it, we have to know. I have to know. Mm -hmm. um, do you prefer uh, like smoky kind of whiskeys or like a scotch kind of like smoky scotch style or like a bourbon style? Scotch number kind of one, like? bourbon number two. Yeah. Scotch number yeah. one, okay. bourbon number two. And <laughs> okay. my pick, um, I will start sort of middle ground with my pick of the week with uh, scotch whiskey. We will say Macallan 12. Mm -hmm. That is a nice. classic. Highland classic single malt scotch whiskey you're going to get a little bit of vanilla notes on the nose and a really really mm. clean finish just just pour yourself two fingers of it and let it sit for about 10 minutes or so to air out a little bit and you'll really be able to bring out those vanilla notes and and it'll be a nice smoother whiskey for you what, mm. what's your uh, how do you feel about ice uh it depends um <laughs> If I'm going to put ice or any water in there, it's only going to be maybe like a teaspoon of, of yeah. chilled water, uh, because I don't okay. want to, I don't want to water it down too much because you lose a little bit of the um, of the uh, yeah. tasting notes on it. But most yep. of the time, I'm just neat two fingers. But if you, if you let it sit for ten minutes or so, you're going to lose a lot of that burn, that harsh burn that right, any right. whiskey is going to give you. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Um, Macallan 12 is my pick this time. It's not my favorite, but it's a good middle of the road to get people into the world of single malt scotch whiskey. Nice. Wow. <laughs> I agree. That's good. You know, I, good. I know nothing about whiskeys at all, but it's good to hear 
you just give kind of an intro pick. I think that's nice. Yeah. Thank that's you. a good one. Thank you. Thank yep. you. Thank you. Now, do, do you have a, a whiskey of choice, Mr. Thorat? Yes. Uh, well, so first of all, um, I, I'm a big fan of Irish whiskey. So like I would say like for like a real starter whiskey, like a J just a Jameson, basic Jameson is good. But mm -hmm. Macallan 12 is fantastic. But as far as like a like a really, really good uh, scotch, mm -hmm. um, it's I'm not going to pronounce it right because it's uh, Scottish, but it's like Abelor is the Abelour. company. It's, uh, I, say, like I said, I'm not going to, I don't pronounce it correctly, but the, uh, the Abunda, which you can now correct as well, mm -hmm. um, is just, and I actually, I had it live on uh, Windows Weekly uh, when we were out in San Francisco for probably a PDC or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it was Richard Campbell who gave it to me and he ruined my life. Um, <laughs> and it was, uh, I did not let it sit for 10 minutes. And the, the fr my first reaction was, I think I just got shot in the tongue. <laughs> um, but we now never don't have a bottle of this at home. It's right. it's uh, fantastic. When I was here visiting Twit um, before our announcement of me joining Twit, we had Abel Hour right mm -hmm. here on the set. And um, nice. I took it upon myself and walked out of the studio with it. Shh, yes, smart, smart. So as we were as bottle, we were drinking though? it that day, the first the first time I had it, uh, Leo tried to abscond with it, and I prevented that from happening. <laughs> yeah, that was like that was like one of the most legendary Windows Weekly episodes yeah. ever yes. in the studio. Yeah, yes. it was Richard and Carl, right? Wasn't Carl Franklin there it as was. well? It was Richard, and, Carl, uh, and all of you, all of us were on live on the screen uh, in the studio, and I was the only sober one there because I was drinking <laughs> beer and not whiskey. <laughs> It was a good day. Yeah, I enjoy your um your beer picks each week. Uh, uh, thanks. There's, thanks. There's so many out there from the microbrewery I know, there's standpoint, so many. and and I like yeah. to try to check off a list to see what I can get my hands on and and yep. try something different. You know, so I've always nice. looked forward to your picks on that. Oh, nice. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Well, is there anything you'd like to plug, Miss Mary Jo, before we before we get out of here? Um. <sighs> Nothing too big. Um, you know, we're still trying to figure out what we're doing with October 2nd, the hardware event. Right. So if yeah. we end up doing anything around that in terms of either a meetup, I don't know if we will or not. It all depends on what time this event is or if we're going to do it live or if you guys are going to broadcast it, if they stream it, we don't really know. Right. But I'd say stay tuned for October 2nd. Right. Yeah, hopefully we'll yep. know something in before Soon. the week I know. before. Yeah, let's hope. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Give us some time to plan on the journalistic yep. side. Yeah. All right. But thank you. Thank you, Miss Mary Jo. It was very, very nice and fun to to be able to chat with you yes. here this afternoon. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Therat, what about yourself? Mm -hmm. I get nothing. I mean, I get the book, you know, I, got I, think, you know, <laughs> I get the same thing I always got. <laughs> Check him out. That's Mr. Paul Therott. Check out his books and give them both a follow over on the Twitterverse. Uh, Mary Jo <laughs> Foley and Mr. Paul Therott. So that is it for this week on uh, Windows Weekly. I want to say thank you again to our host for tolerating me. Um, no, thank you for doing it. Really, I know, I'm you did great. Glad to Thanks. finally meet you. Really, really Same. appreciate it. And it is Glad to pleasure. hear you're a Windows fan and a whiskey fan. Yes, <laughs> so. yes. W's and W's. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, thanks again to our, our Twit uh, chat room here for all of their support. I've seen the support showing up there, and, and I really, really appreciate that. But um, you can uh, catch Windows Weekly here on the Twit Podcast Network every Wednesday at around 11 a.m. Pacific. I don't know the UTC time because I'm not as good as Mr. Laporte, clearly. But uh, check us out every week here and be sure to search for us in your podcatchers and hit that subscribe button. We we'll really appreciate all of that support. Uh, again, I am Matt Pruitt. You can find me over on the Twitterverse at Ant underscore Pruitt. And uh, just check us out here on the Twit Podcast Network as we have more awesome content coming, uh, whether it be Tech News Weekly, iOS Today, all about Android, Windows Weekly, Mac Break Weekly. We, we got it all here for you. So thank you again. And um, we'll catch you all next time on Windows Weekly. Take care. <laughs>